اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اسلام الدین علی محمد النبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه واله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يقول ربنا جل جلاله في كتابه الكريم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد اخوه الايمان والاسلام بارك الله فيكم جميعا اوصي نفسي واوصيكم بتقوى الله عز وجل حيث ما كنتم brothers in islam I start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except him and bearing witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is indeed the servant and the final prophet of Allah. Peace be upon him, all his family members and all his companions. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Ikhwat al-Imani wal-Islam, I remind you and I remind myself to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times and wherever you are and wherever wherever you are insha'allah ta'ala jalla jalaluhu ikhwat al-imani wal-islam it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-ahadu al-samad al-ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufu an ahad it is he who created us from nothing into being and when he created us and he brought us into existence he did not leave us unguided or astray he gave us subhanahu wa ta'ala the best gift you can ever be given. And this is the guidance of Islam, the guidance of Adam, the guidance of Moses, of Isa, of Nuh, of Idris, of Jesus. Peace be upon them all. And finally, the guidance of Muhammad, the best of all prophets. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. This is the best gift you are ever given in your entire existence, the guidance of Islam. May Allah, may Allah make us live up on Islam and die up on Islam. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ikhwat al-Imani wal-Islam. Islam taught us how to be successful human beings. And Islam also taught us how to be very civilized, how to have good manners, good etiquette, how to work, how to behave, how to achieve our aims and our goals, how to worship Allah, how to serve Allah, how to be a human being, and so on and so forth. And we know that very well, that these teachings are found in the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the authentic sunnah of our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Therefore, as Muslims, we do not need anyone to come and teach us about our religion. We do not need anyone to come and teach us what is lawful and what is unlawful in our lives. We do not need anyone to teach us how to be civilized or uncivilized. We do not need anyone to teach us what is sinful and what is not sinful, what is a good deed and what is a bad deed. Indeed, we are taught all of this within the gracious book of Allah, Al-Quran Al-Kareem, and the pure sunnah of our beloved Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam. These are our sources of knowledge nothing else when it comes to our religion and to our way of life because indeed islam is the true religion as well as a perfect way of life which is compatible and suitable for every time for every community for every culture for every place and every location islam is for alameen for everything that exists whether it is a human being or whether it is a jinn Islam is for all. As Allah says in the Quran al-Kareem, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً 
lil alameen. O Muhammad, Allah did not send you as a prophet except as a mercy for everything that exists. Muslims and non-Muslims. Jinn, good Muslims, bad Muslims. Good people, bad people. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sent to all with solutions for every crisis humanity might face, no matter where and no matter what time it is or what era it is. Islam is a solution and is the only way to success, the only way to success in this life and most importantly, in the hereafter. May Allah make us live upon Islam and die upon Islam. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ikhwat al-Imani wal-Islam. Our topic today is very sensitive as well as, as, well as, it, is, as well as it is very important for us to know and to bring up and discuss in a civilized manner, education, educational manner, so that we know how to deal with problems using Islam as our prime source of knowledge, insha'Allah ta'ala. Ikhwat al-Imani wal-Islam. We know that in schools here in the UK, specifically primary schools, there is a subject which is made compulsory for primary schools. And this subject is none than what? Sex and relationship education for kids from the age of five and go up. Yes, from the age five, from year one. It is officially announced by the government and I'm gonna read the article of the government for you inshallah ta'ala today so that you are updated and you take your, your steps as a guardian or as a responsible guardian who obeys Allah and follows Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in a peaceful, civilized manner, inshallah ta'ala. Ikhwat al-Imani wal-Islam. But before I start reading for you the article, I'd like to bring your attention to this very important thing. Most of us, most of us Muslims who are in the UK or in the West, we chose to be in here, okay? I understand some of us had no choice but to be here, okay? Some of us, were born here, some of them, they fled the war and so on and so forth. They had no choice. But we have a common thing to share, whether you came here willingly or you just happened to be here. We have the same responsibilities that we share. And this responsibility for us all is we Muslim community to preserve our identity as Muslims and to preserve our faith and our religion for ourselves as guardians and number two, for our offsprings and children. It is our responsibility. We live in a mainly an Islamic society as we know. A society that is almost faithless. A society that is completely or almost completely disconnected from God, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And trials and tribulations are like waves in the sea, right? So non-stop. We need to find ways how to deal with these trials and tribulations, specifically the sex education or relationship education in primary school. What should the Muslim do as a parent? How do you save your family? How do you save your children? How do you protect their identity as Muslims? How do you protect their faith for them? We know that you are well taught. You're a grown up man or woman. You know what your faith is. You know what you shouldn't do and what you should do. But a kid that is as young as five or six or seven, they are absolutely innocent. You can convince them by giving them a sweet. Therefore, it is your duty and my duty and every guard and every parent's duty to make sure they are well protected and well safe from any satanic plot that are plotted against them. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ إِخْوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ islam Sex and relationship education in primary schools. The 20th of July this year, which means, uh, or the 9th of July this year, which means two months ago only, the British government officially announced that in primary school will be a new subject taught, and this is sex and relationship education. They often refer to it as a relationship education. Relationship education. But if you read the articles and you read the rules and regulations, you will find out that it is what? No more than, or no more or less than sex education. Okay, and I'm going to read for you the article which is found in their official website, www.gov.uk. The only website where you get authentic and accurate news about the government and the updates from the government in the UK. Ikhwat al-Imani islam I've wrote it down or I copied it and pasted it in my phone. And I'm going to read this for you, inshallah ta'ala. 
It says, sex education in schools. Children must also study. Your children, my children, Christian children, uh, Jewish children, Hindus, Buddhist children, all children in the UK. They must study. Sex and relationship education, year seven onwards. Now they put, they put sex education and relationship education together for children who are in year seven plus. Okay? They mean that those children who are in year six and go down, they don't have sex education, they only have relationship education. They differentiate it between the two. But you'll come to know that there is a contradiction between these two terms within the article itself. Okay? Now, we know when you reach secondary school, you are 11 or 12, you have some knowledge. You speak well English. You're taught some Islamic studies. You're taught whatever religion you were taught. You have some kind of protection. You can defend yourself when someone obliges you or forces you to do something sinful or to accept something sinful. You can defend yourself in a civilized manner. But when you are five or six or seven, you almost know nothing about these things because you're innocent. This is not the right age to know these things. Now, let's see. Our main concern now is for primary school. Year one, year two, year three, year four, five, and six. Now, it says... Sex education primary, the relationship education, RSE, and health education, England, regulations 2019, have made relationship education compulsory in all primary schools in the UK. Every primary school, including Islamic primary schools, they will have to have this, what? Relationship education. Okay? Sex education is not compulsory in primary schools. Now they're differentiating between uh, the two. Why are they differentiated? How do they differentiate? Let's find out. Primary schools, what do they learn in primary schools as? Relationship education. They teach them about relationships and health, including puberty, the national curriculum for, for are related or such as the main external body part, the human body, how it grows from birth to the age of puberty, and reproduction in some plants and animals. There is some question marks in here when it comes to this, to this article, okay? But let's listen to this, please. Within the same article, it says, many primary schools already choose to teach or have the right to choose to teach some aspects of sex education and will continue to do so, although it is not a requirement. It means the British government is given the right to any primary school in the UK to teach sex education, not relationship education, sex education. And sex education includes very sensitive topics which children are innocent to learn. Not befitting for them, I'm gonna list for you what topics they are. Let's find out. They say the aim, or by the time students leave primary school, they will be able to know how relationships work, and it will focus on the characteristics of positive relationships with particular emphasis on friendships. I don't know what they mean by friendships, whether boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever it is. Family relationships and relationships with other children and with adults. There's a question mark in here. Relationship with other children and adults. Okay, let's think positively. Primary school kids will learn that relationships, listen to this carefully, they will learn that relationships come in all shapes and sizes. The education secretary was asked by the Mera newspaper. They said, will they be learning about homosexuality and gay people and transgender people and so on and so forth, LGBTQ community? Will they be learning about this? What do you think the education secretary of the UK said to to the journalist who asked this question. And this was this summer only, brothers and sisters, only this summer. He said this. Young children will not be forced to have difficult conversations. This is his answer. Understand what you want to understand. Young children will not be forced to discuss or talk about difficult conversation. It means we will talk about this, about homosexuality, what it means to be a transgender, what it means to have no gender, what it means to be lesbian, what it means to have father and a mother, or two fathers at home at the same time, and two mothers at the same time, which are in a relationship. We can talk, we will teach them this, but if they don't want 
to learn it, we will not force them. A five-year-old or a six-year-old baby, I would call them, how can they know whether it's right or wrong? When you talk to them in a soft manner, when you bring them sweets and toys and you put music on and you start teaching them about these things, they will embrace this. They don't know. Their parents haven't taught them this yet because it's not the right age. It's not the right age. So there is a great possibility in primary schools they will be taught this. They will be taught this, to be honest with you. What can you do as a parent? Let's continue reading, inshallah ta'ala. We Muslims have nothing against what? Teaching our kids how to have a good relationship when they grow up. What, is a rela what, what, what a good relationship looks like with a father and a mother, with a sister and a brother. We have no problems with that. We have no problems uh, to teach our kids how to be protective and not to talk to strangers and not to indulge themselves in activities which are unlawful in Islam. We have no problems with that. But we have a major problem when you teach my five or six year old or seven or eight year old baby what a homosexual person is and how a homosexual relationship works. Having two fathers at home at the same time or two mothers at the same time. This is a problem. I tell you something that was reported to me. It happened in one of the schools here in Brand, primary school. At the end of the lesson, a woman, a woman, a young woman, walked into the classroom, the classroom maybe year, year, year three or four, completely naked. And she was explaining to them what the body parts are and how they function and everything. When a six-year-old or seven-year-old girl came back home and told her Muslim father this happened completely naked. He was shocked and he went to the school and spoke to the principal of the school. He said, is this right? It happened? He said, yes, it happened, but it's not in our control. The government sent us once or twice a year something like that, and we can't refuse. I am against it. The principal of the school was against it himself. But of course, he doesn't want to lose his job. He doesn't want to challenge this. Why do I have to see a naked person in order to know about body parts? My father, my mother will teach me when I go, when they wash me, when they wash me in the toilet or in the bathroom. They will teach me that these are private parts and I should preserve them and not expose them to anyone. Is this what it means, sex education, relationship education? What's worse than that, there's videos all over online. They bring a homosexual person, okay, to the primary school and he stands and he performs for the kids, a man dressed in a woman. Uh, outfit as a clown and he tells them that it is okay to feel like a woman to feel like a girl if you're a boy or it's okay to feel uh, like a boy if you are a girl and it's okay to have uh, a friend as a boy and you love them and they love you uh, it's okay it's okay trying to brainwash them trying to convince them that this is acceptable and this is normal and it's not sinful in any religion what I see this as is child abuse, no more than that. You're diverting innocent kids from what? From the natural nature which God created them with. This is not relationship education, my friends. Let us be clear. If you're teaching sex education to someone who's 17 or 16, we might not have a problem with that. Uh -huh. But 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is a crime. This is a crime in the sight of God and reality, إخوة الإيمان والإسلام. وأقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ونسائل المسلمين فاستغفروه وتوبوا إليه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. استغفر الله وتوبوا إليه استغفر الله وتوبوا إليه. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على محمد النبي الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. إخوة الإيمان والإسلام. We know. That zina, fornication in Islam, is haram with all of its types. Whether homosexuality, whether being lesbian, or whether boyfriend and girlfriend, or adultery, it's all haram. Allah says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلًا Do not commit fornication. Do not go anywhere near fornication. Indeed, it is a shameful action and it leads to wickedness and evilness. It includes all types of zina including homosexuality. And we know the Quran strongly and strictly prohibits what? 
homosexuality and any activities related to that. We as Muslims, we have the right to practice our religion. We have the right to practice our religion freely, as long as we are not wronging others. I have every right to choose how to bring up my children. You do not oblige me how to bring them up. I bring them up the way I know, the way my faith teaches me. Ikhwat al-Imani wal-Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he mentioned in a hadith, kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi. Every one of you is responsible for their subject. As you know the hadith. Now, within the same article, within the same article, the government says that as a parent in primary school, you have every right to pull out your children if you are not happy with sex education, not relationship education. Let's be more specific in here. Relationship education, it's compulsory. You have no choice to withdraw your children from the classroom. But sex education, which primary schools have as optional uh, subject to teach, you have every right to pull them out. And they also say that teachers from the primary schools should and must explain to parents every step about this relationship education and sex education before the lesson starts. So you have every right as a Muslim parent, when you go to drop your daughter or your son in primary school, to ask the teacher, what is exactly, what are, what are the syllables that you are teaching for my innocent kid, whether it is relationship education or sex education, as they refer to it, to be honest with you, is the same thing for us. It's the same thing. If you are not happy with anything, and you will be not happy indeed, then you have every right to say, look, when this lesson takes place, I want my kid to be absent. You have every right. And please, I urge you to visit this website. It's the official website of the government, www.gov.uk. You will know your rights. You will know your rights. However, I advise every Muslim, when you speak to the teachers or to the school principal, speak in a polite manner, in a respectful manner. We're not going to protest outside the school. This is not Islamic. This is not Islamic or shouting or accusing the teachers. The government obliged them to do that. And they don't want to lose their jobs. We are all to blame, to be honest with you. And ahead of everyone is the government. Okay? But speak in a polite manner, as Allah says, وَقُولُ لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا When you speak to people, speak politely and nicely. Work together with them. Lots of teachers, hundreds of them, are unhappy about this. But they have no choice. But you can work. You can work with them. Speak to them nicely and try to pull out your children from these lessons, inshaAllah ta'ala. Homeschooling is allowed in the UK. Alhamdulillah. It's not banned yet. Take advantage. If you can afford that in a professional manner, someone qualified to teach your kids at home, then do that if you can afford it, as long as it is allowed. But one day it will not be like it is in many countries in Europe. Take advantage of that. And most importantly, educate your kids at home. They're brainwashing them and persuading them in school to accept this ideology of homosexuality and so on and so forth. When they come home, you teach them what the pure Islam is. You teach them that this is sinful, inappropriate, not acceptable by all religions. By all religions, none will accept this, including us. It's fitna. Allah says, إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ Fitna. Indeed, your wealth and your offsprings are a trial, are a test from Allah to you. Are a test from Allah before Allah on the day of resurrection. And Allah will ask you, you chose to be in that society. You chose to be there. It was your responsibility to bring up your kids as Islamic as you can. But you failed to do that because of carelessness. Because of your love for worldly gains and riches. You never went to school. You never picked your daughter. You sent someone to pick it. You never asked a teacher. You never opened their book. You never helped them with their homework. And then you say, why my children became homosexuals or drug dealers or Atheist, So do your steps. Once you do your steps as a guardian, as a parent, the rest is with Allah. Allah will not hold you accountable for that beyond your ability. But you need to do something. Rasul Islam says, There is no single human being who Allah makes him responsible for his subjects. And then he fails his responsibility towards his subjects. And he dies in that manner. 
Allah will make Jahannam his house on the day of judgment. Allah will make Jannah forbidden for him. ما من عبد يسترعيه الله رعية يموت يوم يموت وهو غاش لهم إلا حرم الله عليه الجنة رواه مسلم. Allah will make Jannah forbidden for you ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا. Or you who believe save yourselves and your family from the hellfire. From the hellfire إخوة الإيمان والإسلام. Do your best إن شاء الله تعالى. إن شاء الله تعالى work with anyone who's against this. When uniting up on goodness and khair, it is recommended to do that in Islam. If it takes you to unite with the Christian, with, with the Jewish, with other religious leaders in order to minimize this or prevent this, then work with them. Because our children are all innocent no matter who they are. Regardless what their faith is or what their race is, they're all innocent. We protect them all. We protect them. I personally would not send my daughter to a school like that. I will do all it takes. I will work extra hours to pay for homeschooling private education. I will do that. I will do that.